Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm Stacy, and today we are going to do a mixed media piece. Um, this is the original drawing that I did back in November of 2021. It is a graphite drawing of a beautiful bear. And I love this piece so much that it has stuck in my brain. And I've, done, I've redone it a couple times in different mediums. But today I want to do it in um, mixed media with a moon behind her. I went ahead and traced her. And then using tracing paper, I went ahead and got her on the page. This is what the tracing looks like. Oh, never mind the deer. That's for a different, that's a different video. <laughs> um, but this is the tracing and, and what it looks like. I'll probably simplify this so that it's not so much for you guys. If you want to use her in one of your paintings, I will put the PDF of, of that line art below for you. But this is what our piece looks like. I've got my last few sheets of... Um, Union Square 140 pound hot press paper. So this is not cold press, it's hot press, which means it's smoother. And the, the mediums you use will sit more on the surface, watercolors especially. Um, I really need to buy another light for this side of the table. Um, sorry, the lighting is all wonky. I guess it's all right. It's just throwing me off. Um, at any rate, what I thought I would do was start with my new Copic Multiliner in Cobalt. This is um, water and Copic proof pigment ink. Um, 0 0.03. I'm going to draw the bear with this. And then we're going to watercolor over the top. And on top of that, I have a couple of art supplies that I may throw on top. I have out my metallic purple... A Unisigno um, pen. It's a metallic violet, actually. And then my deco brush, my pigment deco brush in white, just in case I need it for around the moon or over the top at all. I also may grab my... I thought they were right here. I just had them yesterday. Oh, they're way over there. Hold on, I gotta grab them. They're way over there. I also have my um, little box of Caran d'Ache uh, water soluble um, pastels, I guess you could call them. And then my new set of 72 um, Castle Arts colored pencils, which I may use on the top after we are all done doing all the other things. First, we're gonna start with this this number three or point zero three Copic multiliner in cobalt, which I just got in my sketch box to go ahead and do my line art. Now I'm going to use the drawing for reference, um, but mostly I just want her to be Sketched in well, not sketched, but drawn in fairly lightly. Um, or not lightly, but um, not quite as detailed as the pencil drawing. More scribbly, because we're gonna put watercolor over the top of her anyways. So. No real need to get too carried away with the details, especially considering that the moon is behind her. There. Okay, so there's her, her basic drawing, which is the basic pencil drawing, but in blue ink. Looks awesome, and uh, 
Alright, I'm going to put this down now. <coughs> I think... Yeah, we're just going to... I'm going to scooch her back down so that when I zoom out, you guys can see the whole piece as I work with the watercolor. But here's a close-up of the ink. All those lines... And I would call that a finished drawing um, in ink, honestly. I, I wouldn't um, zoom out so I get the placement right so you guys can see the whole piece. I'm scooching over so I have room for my palette, for my watercolors. Take it down a bit. Grab the watercolors. Bring them in. And... I'm going to move these so that I don't get, if I, if I decide to splatter anything, I don't get anything on them. Is there anything else I need to move? No. As usual, I have paper towels. I have an array of paintbrushes over here that kind of live over here, but for the most part, I will be using my Princeton Neptune 8 and 18 round. I also have a couple of others. Royal and Nate Langnickel. Round number four, because it comes to a decent point. I leave that out regularly. I got this in an art box a couple months ago. It is a Princeton Filbert Snap, and I found that I really like the length of these bristles and the shape for certain places. It's real. It's really nice brush to have on hand. And then this is just another Princeton um, Art and Brush Company number five round. It has decent snap and it comes to a decent point, so that also is out. Um, we are going to start by doing the sky around her. And I'm going to use my indigo, My Sennelier Indigo, which is my favorite. I should use the Daniel Smith one, but I really, it's not my favorite Indigo. I'm almost, I gotta refill my Sennelier one though. Look at low. Indigo, that's a little bit of um, cobalt teal, which is fine. We can mix that in. It's not a big deal. Got a good, good globule of that going right here. And in it, I'm going to put some neutral tint. Because that darkens it up and makes it um, a deeper color. And then I will often put in some dioxazine purple to give it a more night sky feel to me. Um, if, if you have a night sky color that you really love, by all means, you guys do that. I'm going to clean the brush a bit and then, pretty wet, I'm going to drag it around the moon all the way down. I'm probably going to put pine trees back here in the sky, like a piece of hair, sorry. Oh, for the love of God. That must be my daughter sending me pictures of the grandbaby. She's the only one that messages me like back to back like that. Um, there, I'll check that in a minute, make sure nothing's wrong, but all the way around the moon, I'm gonna, as I go, try not to get too dark close to the moon, because it's, I mean, it's gonna be pretty bright, right? Or as bright as you want it to be in your painting. And remember, I'm working on a block, so I'm not too terribly worried about this um, grab this and really drop it in and let it move around on its own a bit. And go around the moon, kind of not touching it and let the color bleed in if it wants to. Go right up to the bear though. Maybe just down here as well. 
Keep it all uniform, why not? There we go. Got some on my moon already. She was nice. Just said I wasn't going to do that. Kind of digging the feel of that glow. Right? Like that. Alright. And then I'm going to go pure color. And to go. And these edges. Dioxazine. Let it mix on the page. Just because it's so pretty when it does, when it dries, it's gorgeous. And I don't I know it doesn't really look like it now, but it is a bit granulating. And on this smoother paper, it is not. Um, I don't want to get too dark down here because I do want to put in some trees in the background back there against that glowing sky. Yeah, I think that's good for our sky. I was going to go in with a little more, but I really don't want to. I think I'm going to do a touch more indigo on this corner, though. Right there. Yeah, I like that. All right. And now I'm going to let that dry, and while that, I'm going to let it dry naturally because I don't want to lose any of the granulation. And I may go in and put another coat on after this dries, just to make it deeper and darker. Um, in those corners especially, grab this pooled water that's going on right there. I'm a disaster and I will make a mess with that later if I don't. <coughs> okay, and now this I want that to be soft. Soft, soft, soft. Really, really soft. On that moon. Maybe we'll go ahead. And wet this moon. Give it a little bit of interest. Take some of that same indigo purple mix and kind of tap, tap, tap. I feel like I feel like I'm losing my glow around. The outer edge of my moon. I'm gonna go ahead. Well, it's still wet and kind of pull that back out like that. Give me a little, little bit of room, right? Yeah, that's better. Okay. A little bit more glow. Maybe not so uniform. There, I like that. Nice. Okay. And then continue. Gonna have a little dioxazine. Whoops, that's a lot of dioxazine. A little bit of this Gwen Violet. And drop that on here, just to give the moon a little bit of interest, like that. Remembering that I'm going to blot, but this does dry a lot lighter than it is. Okay. 
Then we can come in the clean spot and blot like so. Make it all soft and glowy. I like that so far. So far, so good. Touch more and to go. Really watered down. Do we like that? Good. Okay. There. We'll leave our moon alone for now. Let it dry. <clears throat> I think I think I'd like to go in with a little bit of pink. This is um, like leftover Quinn magenta, and I'm gonna go ahead and give her. Oops, A little bit of a pink glow all over and then we're gonna come over the top with other colors that, oh. A little more water. Just give her an overall like this is putting in a local color. Now I get that the she's not a realistically she would not be a pink bear, but hey, this is my painting and my world, and I get to paint and do what I want. I'm gonna go in with our purples and because the moon is behind her we're going to go ahead and throw in some shadow here not all the way up though because her face is uplifted and there will be reflected lights here and there. See? Perfect. I'm digging it already. And um... And this is completely how I create when I'm when I'm doing a piece for myself. I will usually have a book on. I'm actually in book nine of the zombie fallout series that I told you guys I've been if you've been here for a while I've I've mentioned the um, audible book that I'm listening to this book series that I'm listening to. Um, Just dropping in some of her shadow furs. If I can find the reference photo, I'll drop it in, in the comments below. I don't know if I'll be able to, but if I can, I will. 
but with any picture that you're doing you need to think about where your light source is coming from and that's where how you play your shadows and lights um, on your subject matter right I mean you can do whatever you want <coughs> You can make it as fantastical as you want. If you want your piece to be all in white, go for it. But for the purposes of this painting, um, the moon is behind and she's kind of sitting in the open, not not completely shrouded in darkness at all, and um, kind of just basking in the moonlight. Right? Maybe it's a crisp fall evening and she's just... You know, she doesn't have any cubs to worry about, nothing like that. So she's just chilling, you know. She's just chillaxing in the sun, in the moonlight. And, um, no worries, really. And I'm putting in a little bit of indigo underneath her to give a little bit of a... Um, you know, shadow. She's definitely going to cast some sort of shadow. Look at the size of her. But that moon's pretty bright, so it wouldn't be terribly big shadow. And she's just on this little rise, having a great evening. No worries. Enjoying her evening. Can I look at that? She's this is so great. I I love this piece. And while it's still damp, you can tweak and go in and get some you know, just tap and drop on some some more colors and textures. Give it a little bit of depth here and there. Because some of it has dried a bit. And dry brush and kind of gently drag that around. Drag it like around and up the side of her face to give those. See, it gives little shadow textures on her fur, which is great. And I'd like this ear to be a little more dark on this side. There. There. And just a little, little bit here. That. How's that looking? Oh, she looks so great. I'm digging it. Digging it, digging it, digging it. Okay. I've used up almost all of my indigo. It's alright though. You don't mind. Her texture going with a little bit of dry brushing, a little bit of darkness where her, her arm is resting on her leg right there. Yeah, I'm digging this so much. Okay, a little water, a little purple, a little blue, a bunch of water. Really that color back that I like and neutral tint to kind of mute it down a little bit gray it out and paint's gray neutral tint is a little bit purple purple blue biased anyways so it does make nice nighttime colors right so what we can do with this when I actually have 
this weird new brush that I got in an art box. There we go. I just had it a little bit. Ouch. So I got this triangular um, brush. It is literally triangular and it comes to a point. Um, it's a, a Sketchbox exclusive brush. It's called a, a wedge brush, which is interesting, but I I think it's like one the one brush I will use for um, getting in like background, distant, like tree textures like that. Like in the off in the distance behind her. She's got of course the forest happening back there, right? And maybe she's sitting on this bluff above all the, the trees that are down here. Right? Is my thought. She is um yeah. So that's off in the distance in the back. Um some some sort of hillside over here in the distance like that yeah give her an actual world to be in right and I couldn't figure out what in the world I would use this brush for but it's really good for this technique this getting in of distant tree shapes and the way, 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 way background like that. And that, that's so cool. And you don't have to fill it all in. You can leave spaces where, I mean, because not, not, the whole forest uh, hillside doesn't need to be blocked in. It can be, have some bits where it's clear field, right? And just layer on some darker colors here and there down at the base of the trees down here maybe like that That's too much. Too dark. I don't need to get too carried away. What am I thinking? Okay. And then down here, the base of the hill. Can block that in. And some taller, darker trees because it's closer. But it's still moon glowed, right? Because it's a very bright day or a very bright night. So everything's in um, in that soft moon glow feel. I would like the base here to have. forest brush or whatever right here. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Maybe 
Maybe a touch of darkness here and there. Not too dark. Not too dark. How's she looking? Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Alright, I'm digging it. Alright. What else do I want to do? Honestly, not too much more. Maybe we don't need to incorporate other tools, do we? I'd like the moon to be a little more... Um, I don't know. Moon-like? <coughs> oh, that just looks silly now. now. I have to do it in other places, otherwise it looks silly. It looks like a mistake instead of something I did on purpose. Give her some texture in some areas, though. Yeah, there we go. Dry brushing right there. Dragging that brush around. I got super quiet on you guys because I was thinking about whether or not I like that, and I kind of really do. All right. Um, what do I not like? I don't like my dark pencil line first. Can I erase it? Not really. How about... These are watercolor based. Woo! They jumped out. Let's grab the white. Let's see if we can cover that pencil line up a bit. Is it just me? It probably is just me. That does give a nice glowy feel to my moon, which I enjoy. I'm digging that kind of softened effect. too much. Can you even tell what I'm doing? Put a yellow on that edge right there. Which I do not want in my painting. Since there's not a splash of yellow anywhere to be seen, it would look weird. Okay. I feel like it appropriately softens the um, 
spots that I feel like are a little too dark. How's that? Okay. Maybe. Should we leave that alone now? Probably. Alright, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. I do want a touch more. That's not clean enough. There's distant like forest and hill back here, even further back. Feeling like this is too white. Drop a little bit of purple on it. To soften that white glow so it's not quite as white as the moon. Right? I don't want it to be quite that white. There. Alright, as I broke this, I'll just drop it back in there, I think. I don't know, I'm thinking she's done, but what look I, I, I might feel differently tomorrow. Just a little more contrast on her, on the front, where she definitely be in more shadow, right? I darken it and then I get scared and I blot it right out. Don't be afraid of your painting.
I got super quiet. I'm thinking about um, light and shadow and where this bear would really be in deep shadow. Right, mostly along that. Most of the front of her would be pretty dark like that. Um, I'm just bummed that it's obliterating most of the pen work, but that's all right. When I get all done, if I honestly don't like it, I can redo it. There's nothing saying I can't. I think I'm going to stop for tonight and um, I'm going to call her done, I believe. I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape. If I do decide to do anything else to her, um, I'll film it. I'll let you guys know what, what happened, what's going on. Um, but I'm thinking... For the most part, she's done. But you always come back to a piece like this um, the next day, and you know it. It doesn't hurt to reassess. And I'm gonna get some textures on this foreground right here. Dry brush some texture in. Uh, mostly just because I really like texture. Um, wet the brush, dry the brush, grab some ink. Ink, paint, grab some paint, and just drop in some textures like that. <clears throat> Creates a little more visual interest. Okay, I'm going to stop because I could fuss and pick all night, right? We're going to go ahead and remove our tape. This, this is like one of the most satisfying parts of doing the painting. Is that a beautiful, ooh, crisp edge. And remember to pull away from your painting. Just in case the paper does rip, you don't rip into your page. It did rip a little bit right there. It's all right though. It's all right. And peel this off. Gently, and if your tape doesn't peel off nicely, you can warm it up with the hairdryer or a heat tool, and that will soften the glue and help it to um, come off the page more easily. There we go, and then last bit. Away from the painting. And, and there she is. There is our painting. I'll zoom out a little bit more so you can see the whole thing with this gorgeous white border that makes it all the difference in the world. And I kind of love this. I kind of love this a lot. Um, I am really enjoying doing limited color paintings like this with landscapes and putting the bear and the moon in. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very happy with this. Okay. I'm going to stop talking.
Okay, guys. As you've just seen, um, I decided after looking at this for a little while to this morning that it needed some more like depth and definition and a little more contrast. So I decided to get my colored pencils um, and go ahead and do a layer. Now on this smooth paper, it actually took quite a lot of co colored pencil. I'm pretty impressed. And I think, I think it made all the difference in the world in the piece. Um, there's, it's just, it's singing to me more than it, than it did before. All the textures, I mean, there's quite a bit of texture on the paper. The moon looks great. I didn't put any colored pencil on the moon. I left that alone. Just the sky and then of course the bear and the four, the, the ground area. <clears throat> and then I went in with my Derwent blender, which, which I really like a lot more than I like these um, burnishers. The burnishers tend to, in my opinion, flatten and shine, add a shine to the colored pencil. And the blenders tend to just pull the color together and blend. And it does smooth the paper a bit, but not a, not a lot. Um, <clears throat> if you have a heavily textured paper, I could still get more layers on here if I really wanted to. And this is a smooth, hot press paper. But I really like how, how the bear looks now. Much more detailed and there's a lot more depth. I really, really love how she looks. And then the background, I put in more background textures to give like distant rolling hills in that valley that she's overlooking. And the moon is just coming up. And then I darkened with layer upon layer of different colors to darken up her foreground area to give it that much, but give her a little bit of shadow because the moon is behind her. So she would throw a shadow, pretty strong one. Um, yeah, and I just, I really like how it, how it turned out. I'm really, really pleased with this piece. It looks and feels exactly how I wanted it to. Um, which is, I mean, for the most part, I really enjoy most of my art pieces. But this one I, I particularly really, really love. I'm probably going to frame it and put it up on the wall. I like it that much. Um, so we went from a tracing at the beginning. We went from our our tracing to, and our, not that one, our bear drawing to this piece. Yeah. So um, if you have sketches or drawings in your sketchbooks that you really like, um, and I do this kind of a lot, uh, don't be afraid to enlarge in it or just trace it at size and put it in another piece. Cause this is, I mean, this is so satisfying. And I feel like I left an opening here so that there'd be interest in the background. Um, yeah, I just really, really enjoy this piece. Okay, so you guys can tell me what you think below. I, I did go over the top of it with my... Um, I got out my some of my Artist Loft watercolor pencils because I, I didn't... The Castle art pencils don't really have a a deep indigo blue. Um, the mulberry is is very nice. Um, I used heather purple, mulberry, um, ivory black, uh, purple lake deep, and Prussian blue. A lot of Prussian blue. I sharpened it twice. And then I used this um, Aqu Aquarabelle Stabello watercolor pencil um it's a, it's a blue but it doesn't say what blue it's number 9041 which is a really nice dark blue i used a lot of that and i didn't i didn't use any of these actually um any of my artist loft ones so um if if for getting these dark dark blues and purples the layering was amazing I, I i love how it looks but i would i would love a deep indigo does anyone know 
of a brand of pencil that has a deep indigo and like a deep purple like super almost black if you do drop it in the comments below please because I would like to pick those pencils up for this kind of, of work and I do use those colors a lot in my watercolors so <clears throat> goodness yeah yeah I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna end the video here thank you so much for watching for painting along I'd love to see your pieces uh, if you could uh, hashtag Blake studio that would be awesome and I will go on there and, and look and see what you guys have done so far uh, yeah so Bye.